rankings because um, there are certain inferences that uh, we can make in the Christian worldview that we cannot know absolutely. So in mm -hmm. a sense, those would be assumptions. But our basic fundamental starting point, our epistemic metaphysic, God himself, that's not an assumption. I guess my problem with Christianity is the assumption that God revealed himself and that God's revelation actually happened. God don't buy it. Okay, so why, see, why did you say the assumption God revealed himself? How do you justify because that? Because it's an assumption. assumption. You have to assume so it's many things. It's an assumption things. because and this is an assumption. It's you an assumption because you question. have to assume you have to assume a couple things. You have to assume that what somebody was what what God quote unquote revealed was number one. It was uh you have to rely on the person who saw it. You have to rely on their senses. That's one assumption. You have to rely on their ability to write it down. You have to rely on the ability that it actually happened. Um, and you have to rely that after, I don't know how many years it was, but 2000 or so years, uh, that it hasn't, that whatever was written down hasn't been changed. There's so many assumptions that you have to make that I just, okay, I don't defined, know. God's defined as an omnipotent being. Mm -hmm. Given that perspective, how do you know that we just have to assume X, Y, and Z about his existence? So if God is enough. So you can define God as an omnipotent being. That's fine. Who cares? So what? Um, well, if you're going to touch on the to take it as a package, you know, given the Christian worldview, God's defined as an omnipotent being. Correct. Under that, under that perspective, uh, we don't assume his existence. So the point No, is I'm not so, saying you so, assume so, his existence. So, I'm talking no, about no, his no, revelation. No, 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 no. Well, that, that, that's entailed in his existence right there because when he speaks, it's revelatory by definition. The, the issue is really? saying that we... What's the definition? On, I'm not done. I'm not done. Listen to what I'm saying to you. Now, what you stipulated was we have to assume um, a number of different things. So mm -hmm. if God is omnipotent, right, that means that there's nothing that's limited to what he can do. If mm -hmm. he wants to convey to us his existence, he can do that perfectly and infallibly. So when you say that we're making an assumption under the Christian worldview, that's just simply not the case. So you, I don't trust, I don't inherently trust humans' ability to interpret what somebody said correctly. That's the problem. Well, then, sure, a guy well, then, can be omnipotent, omnipotent. That doesn't change the fact that somebody had to had to experience and somebody had to write down exactly what God revealed. Well, then that, that means you just simply reject the Christian worldview then. That's another, that's another question. Well, I, I simply call out that there's assumptions that you have to make about God's revelation that I just, I don't think is rooted in, uh, it's oh, just an okay, assumption so, that I have to make, and your entire worldview relies so, on that assumption. Okay, so let's say God reveals to me he exists. How do you know that I'm simply making an assumption from your perspective? As I, t I told, I'm going to say this one more time. There are a couple ways that you're assuming. You're assuming that the person who experienced it, their senses were properly working and that, you know, they weren't hallucinating or whatever. You have to assume that what they wrote down is what they experienced. And you have to assume that what was written down initially stayed the same over 2000 years. So those are some basic assumptions that you have okay. to make at the very least. Okay, you're not understanding this. When you say you have to assume X, you have to assume X in terms of what? What do you mean in terms of I, what? I don't think I understand it's, either what you're saying. Yeah. You have to assume X in terms of what? Like, look, it'll be like saying that um, I have to, and this is just a basic example. I don't think you'd be able to ground this, but let's just say you have to assume you exist. If there is a world that's actualized. If there's a real thing called reality, it wouldn't make sense to say that you assume that you exist. Either you do or you don't. Okay, but okay. do you accept so that you some say, assumptions are worse than others? So, so when you say that we have to assume X, there will have to be a reality in which that's put into. You have to assume X in terms of what? I'm not following. You have to put that into a reality context. So, 
are you not accepting that one when one makes an assumption that there has to be a reality in which that exists in? So, like, I hear words coming out of your mouth, but I'm not connecting any no. sort of dots. It's a metaphorical conversation, so more no, metaphysical you conversation, so you can't look, base it on reality that way. I hate metaphysics. Listen to what I'm saying. If I say, um, Tim stole Susan's purse, but I don't know that for a fact, must there be a real world in which you make that assumption and must there be a reality? Yes. Okay. So if you say I assume X in terms of the existence of God, must there be a reality for me to assume X? Yes. Okay. So when you say I assume X about the existence of God, I, I, I assume X in terms of what? Water running. Oh, sorry. So when you say I assume the existence of God, and what reality do I assume that in terms of? What reality? Yes. I don't know what other realities are there for you to assume. From. What you're presupposing in that question is that there's this thing called a neutral reality in which I cannot know God exists that I'm making assumptions in. Right, you are making an assumption. Well, not necessarily making an assumption about God's existence. You're making an assumption about his revelation. Is, this reality, is this reality neutral of any worldview system? I don't know. So you don't know. So you don't even know what you say I'm assuming X in terms of. You don't even know yes, I do. the reality. Yes, okay, I do. Okay, so I'm asking you, is this reality neutral to any worldview system? No, I'm saying why would it matter? It matters because the world you're stipulating it from will have to be the case. I'm assuming it in terms of the Christian worldview, the Islamic worldview. Which world am I assuming this in, according to you? Holy shit. So why would it matter? Do you, it wouldn't matter what worldview we're stipulating it in. Well, the only thing, assu assumptions, right, would happen regardless of what worldview you live in. You realize so that, right? How, 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 how is an assumption independent of any worldview? The whole point of metaphysics in, in is that worldviews. it's independent of your worldview. Mm -hmm. That's literally not the case. That, that is no definitively Whatever, the case. There has to be a reality in which you evoke any meta metaphysical statements. You can't get away from it. Yes, but that doesn't mean that there has to be a like presupposed worldview associated with that reality. That's that's the sort of conclusion. When you that say you're that there, to, right? there doesn't it does that mean it has to be X. You're making a metaphysical statement about the nature of reality. So what reality are you making that metaphysical statement in? What what statement was being made here? Sorry, I think I think I missed part of the early conversation here. Because I don't, I don't no, think the about, statement I was needed touching to... on the point that Doughboy made. He said, we have to assume the existence of God. No, so when I'm asking that's not him, at all what I said. I don't that is what you what said. I said. Nope. That is what so, you said. So I... do, you want me to, do you want me to say what I said for a third time? So what I that said is what you that... said. That's AJ, what AJF, said AJF, were you listening to the conversation? Partly. Okay, did so you hear him was, say that we have, have to assume? To, what I said did you hear him very... say, hold on, I'm not talking to you. Did you hear him say we have to assume the existence of God? Nope. Not at all what I said. I, I believe that's what you said. From, I, from what, I've, <laughs> from what, I've, from what I'm gather, gathering, that's, that's kind of yeah, what's being implied in, in, in what this you're saying. This is the most disingenuous dog pile I've ever been in. Why, why, would, why would an atheist say that we have to assume a worldview in which God exists? No, no, that, that, that is exactly what you said. But why, so why uh, would you? You said we, we have to assume that. We, you, 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 you said a number of different things. You said we have to assume that God exists. We have to assume that our cognitive nope. faculties are functioning correctly. Nope. Yeah, you said. Yeah, you did. I said. I said. Yeah. Let me, yeah. let me, let me said, tell you what I said. Stop trying to put words in my mouth. What I said. No, I did. You're order, lying. Please I let him. Let me. Can, are you, no, you're done. You're done. You're, I'm going to someone else. This talk. dude's a liar. He's a liar. Okay, go to me. I don't think that's what he said. Okay, let's have this conversation. He did then. say that we have to assume that once we get in revelation, that our sensory experiences and our sensory apparatus is functioning correctly. Then okay. he denied that. Mm, yeah. Oh, okay, then let he him clarify his point. He said we have to assume that, you know, the people writing the Bible 
you know, didn't wasn't hallucinating. We have to assume they're telling the truth about God. Exactly. Yeah. No. He's he no. That, that, that's he's things. he's not he's not stating that we need to assume these things by default. He's saying that we need to assume these things for your worldview to hold true. He was making your. It argument doesn't matter. Clear. It doesn't matter what that what wasn't his freaking, argument. Those are it two different matter. things. He it was doesn't steal. matter what. Oh, okay. Look, listen, listen to me. It doesn't matter what. What way you try to parse out an assumption? An assumption simply means you don't know something. That, that's simply what that means. It doesn't matter what context you don't know it in. Okay? It's as simple as that. Yeah, but he's saying that's that what you're what doing. That's not, that's not what he's saying he agrees with. He's saying that's what you're doing. That's not his worldview. I that's asked, what he's saying yours is. I didn't say that, that was his worldview. I, I, I said it quite the opposite. I just asked him a question. Yeah, but I you said, said that's what he said about his own worldview, but that's not what he said. Sure, he said those exact words, but the context is completely misleading in that regard. That's not that, what he meant. Where did I refer to his worldview? I was talking about worldviews in general. Where did I refer to his worldview? What? Where did I say anything about his worldview at all? You insinuated you, that, his That's all you've been doing. Well, wow, Tom Locke, I've never seen you be this dishonest, dude. It's kind of yeah, surprising. Man, the, tell me why I specific. Tell me why I specifically mentioned his worldview. This whole conversation is about both of your worldviews. That's the context of this conversation. You can't just suddenly okay. ignore no, that. No, I said every metaphysical claim is worldview dependent. But tell me why I specifically mentioned his worldview. Well, okay, the, the, I, there doesn't need to be a specific mention exactly. of his worldview. Exactly. I didn't. I didn't mention his worldview. So now you're lying. Let me finish again. my point. There no, doesn't need to be a contingent on assumptions. All now you're lying. Contingent on assumptions that we are saying. Maybe if you unmute him, he can clarify his point, and you two can continue. Now, since you, you want to be him? a liar, you're yeah. going to get muted too. I'm tired of you people lying about my position. You people are not listening well, dude, at all. Can't respond. Fucking mute them. Easy win. Take the W, boys. Dothan I'm gonna mute you guys. I'm gonna mute you guys, but quit lying about my position. You need to got you guys need to listen clearly. Let's start from the beginning. Yeah, listen and stop <clears throat> just waiting to talk. Okay, then okay. stop silencing people oh, and dissenting oh. opinions. Okay, do you want to know what I said? No, I'm I'm muting because you're liars. You're lying about okay, my then, position. Okay, okay, I then never clear. stated once at any point what his position was. Okay, then rather than muting me, why don't you clarify your position? No, you need to learn how to listen and stop throwing crap out there because you didn't listen carefully. Okay, uh, maybe, maybe, about what I maybe, maybe I misunderstood that. what you said then. So then rather than silencing me, how about you clarify your position and help me understand? No, I was responding to something he said. He said that we would have to assume a number of different things in, in uh, regards to the revelation of God. He said we would have to assume the existence of God. He said we would have to assume that our sensory apparatus is working correctly. And uh, like um, like health coach pointed out, he also said that we have to assume that um, when these men wrote these things down, that they wrote this down correctly in the whole nine. He mm -hmm. said a number of different things that we would have to assume. Yeah. And then You're I missing... simply asked him, I asked him a simple question. When he says we have to assume X, we have to assume X in terms of what? What reality? So in, in terms, terms of, of... Wait, Sorry, Kaiser, so in terms of like my, in terms of like what I said, you're missing one key part, and I said, in order for your worldview to be correct, you must assume these things, not, not whatever, not challenging me on my worldview or on any other worldview or any other reality. I'm saying yours. Assuming these things would come from God Himself, which means we'll have to assume Him too. There's no other way around it, dude. What? How would these things exist if God was not the case first? You're these making things that he reveals the, the the way that they could the, the way that these things could exist if God was not real is if the assumptions were false. That's why he's pointing out these things as assumptions. No, no, no. Then then in, not, then none of these things he's built on would be the case. What do you mean? Sorry, I don't think I understand. Because all these statements are worldview movie. dependent. All these statements are worldview dependent. If I'm saying that God is um omnipotent uh, uh, excuse me yeah omnipotent right if i'm saying that god is omnipotent and then there is no world in reality which that existed and i couldn't make that statement to begin with 
Okay, but that's presupposing the existence of a god. Exactly, which he said I would have to assume. What he never said that. Sorry, I'm not gonna. I'm not yeah, gonna do that really again. I'm not. Let's not. Let's not do that he again. He didn't say presuppose. He said uh, uh, He said Oh assume. my goodness! You're taking it as a as presuppositional from your worldview. He never oh said you have to do it goodness. from your worldview. He said assume it because he's trying to make an argument. Thank you, sir. We can't hear you. Here's the bottom line: any statement that's made is going to be a metaphysic, depending on. How you interpret reality is going to depend upon your metaphysics. As simple as that. So when he said, as when he's talking to a Christian about the existence of God, he says, you have to assume X. Let's just take an example. We have to assume that when we get revelation, our cognitive faculties are working correctly. So when, we, when he says we have to assume X, we have to assume X in terms of what reality? What reality is he talking about? He's talking about the metaphysical reality that we live in. Okay, so is this metaphysical reality that we live in independent of any worldview, period? Yes. That's false. Why? Why is that false? The reason why that's false is because what you're saying is there is, a neutral, there is this neutral zone that is simply the case independent of any worldview. If the neutral zone were the nature of reality itself, then that would be the true worldview. Not any of these other worldviews. There is no such thing as a neutral zone. It doesn't exist. Why do you think it's all a battle of worldviews? Because any statement is going to be made upon your basic metaphysic, how you interpret the nature of reality, which is going to come from an ultimacy. It's going to come from either a personal or a non-personal ultimate. Simple as that. Do you believe that there are there, there's a point Dude, your in, mic's um, really quiet you're gonna have to life, make no, it a little louder there's a point in our life no no listen vanquish here nobody can hear you you're really quiet world oh, i can hear him just fine reality. before we come up with a world you don't you can, I can, I can, I can, hold up i can hear him perfectly let him finish what he had to say so before we come up with a world view we can experience reality do you do you agree with that or not no so you think uh, a two-year-old has a world view a one-year-old has a worldview. A five-month-old, a one-day-old baby has a worldview. They don't have the neurological understanding to uh, cash out what worldviews are, but and a worldview, worldview still has worldview. to exist. A worldview still has to exist, though. Period. Don't, con oh. don't confuse the existence of a worldview with... Um, um, psychological or psychological maturity. Don't confuse the two issues. If you're not aware you have a worldview and you're just experiencing things, how, how can you say that you have a worldview? A worldview is the fundamental ultimate basis of all facts that depend upon something else, that depend upon whatever that ultimate is. Simple as that. Yes. That's what a and, worldview is. And talk, talk to a four-year-old about God. Do you think he'll understand? That's not the issue. The issue is not psychological maturity. The issue is what is the nature of reality in which that four-year-old can even be the case, in which it's even intelligible to talk about a right. four-year-old. Yeah. You're saying it's a battle of worldviews, right? But worldviews are created. They're not, you're not born with a worldview, are you? I think a number of worldviews are created. Every worldview that's false is a created worldview. I agree. That doesn't mean that the true worldview was the one that was just created. Because whatever is the true worldview is necessarily the case. It's not created. It couldn't have been. But it would have to be so that you could get to that conclusion. It's so whatever is the true worldview out of all of them. So you mean to tell, let's say that but in this if, case if that, that if, let's, if that let's, worldview is based on presupposition, then how can you it's a, it's a circular how? argument. Okay, that's that's another problem. If right? if if you if you reject circular arguments, you're done. If you reject all forms of circular argumentation, you're finished. Do you? Um in, in terms of what is the ultimate, then yes, because you actually don't know. Then you're finished. 
then you have no metaphysical groundwork to lay any claim or assertion. Then you're finished. Have a good day. Anybody else? So you just can't answer? Yeah, you can't. No, because you cannot argue without a metaphysical ultimate. If you deny that, then you're not going to be able to make any assertion I'm whatsoever. Not, I, I got, your, I got your, bad news. Your claims, your claims are not going to depend Look, upon anything. I got I'm bad news. I'm not denying the metaphysical dude. ultimate. I'm denying. I'm denying the idea that one world view has supremacy over another world view, in the sense that one one can just say that my world view uh, is, uh, you know, is is the right one because I've. I've made it uh, uh, self, uh, you know, self justice. So, not, so, so, not so, so, supremacy versus. Yeah. It's not even a supremacy. There's no such thing as it's a degree of supremacy. Like this um, worldview is like 90% supreme and the other is like only 85% okay, okay, supreme. 100%. There is no such thing. That doesn't even make any sense. You cannot have okay, no, two worldviews that are true at the same time and in the same sense. That is a logical contradiction. Uh, and it's not, not an issue of supremacy, it's an issue of true if you, or if you, false. That's only true if you believe it from the Christian worldview. So you, you deny no, that, that a neutral worldview, so there's there's no basis that of is argumentation. True of any world you want to so, you are you trying to say that it's possible to have multiple true worldviews? Um uh yeah, well uh pluralism is, is an example of that. That's dude. Pluralism is a logical contradiction. It's not because a logical I'll be like, contradiction. Yes, there's it many, is. There's many it, ways dude, to go to the dude, one. Dude, I'm going to explain this to you. I'm, all right, stop. I'm going to explain this to you very clearly. Let's take two contradictory worldviews. Atheism and Christianity. Both of those views from an ultimate metaphysical um, context cannot be true at the same time and in the same True. sense. Correct, but they but cannot pluralism. be. Okay, no, listen, pluralism doesn't say that so all pluralism is false. One. They don't say all paths because Christianity is an exclusivist ideology. Oh my gosh. It says only I am right, whereas all the others can be saying that, well, in my context, I am leading to God. Okay. No and that is you know that's okay. No, it's, no, it's, no, it's, no, it's, no. Every worldview it's, within it's, within it's, itself it's, 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 is is inherently it's, it's, contradictory to another worldview because they have completely different starting points. This man was about to give you a fantastic education on what pluralism is, and you just cut him off. Please let him continue. No, pluralism okay. is a logical contradiction. Let him, hold because on. Let him, is stipulating the, the, the like very like no, 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 no. Shut up! Shut up! Shut up! It's stipulating the very concept that there can be multiple ultimates contradictory to one another that simultaneously coexist. That is a logical contradiction. From your Christian worldview. Dude, I can talk about Islam and atheism, no, and they're okay, logically no, listen, contradictory. Listen. What I mean from the Christian Those worldview... Those are not my worldviews, you moron. The exclusivity claim is what is preventing you from seeing that many paths can lead to one. To the one. Oh my goodness! You're 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 not you're you're done. This is stupid. So wait wait wait. Disagree. I want to I want to hear his hear his explanation on pluralism. He's literally it's trying it's to indeed. stipulate that you can have multiple true worldviews at the same time. You cannot. Because you don't understand it doesn't mean he doesn't have like some sort of good explanation that we can listen. No to. no tell no 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 no. Let me explain this to you specifically. Can atheism and Christianity be true at the same time and in the same sense? Yes, I'm, they can. There are actually atheist Jews, Christians, and and Muslims. Oh my goodness! Who, who are you talking to? I studied who are this you in college. To? No, no, oh, no. Who? Can the view no. that God exists and the view that God does not exist can those ultimate okay, okay, physical me... claims be true at the same time and in the same sense? Can I explain it from the Hindu perspective? No, Tom no, about... no. I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to the other guy. Okay. 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 Please so let we're... Vanquisher can school those, you on can, religious plural. Can those two things be true at the same time metaphysically and in the same sense? Well, I he can explain how if you'd let him finish and not fucking server mute him. 
I ask you a straightforward question. Let's take two metaphysical ultimates. God does not exist, one, and God does exist, the other. Can those make, two metaphysical ultimates be true at the same time and in the same sense? I'll make a direct and very brief point. No, I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to Bird Nose. Please let Vanquisher answer the question. No, answer the question, case. Bird Nose. I'm talking to I you. I agree with you. I would agree with you in that case. Okay, if you take Islam and atheism, can those two worldviews be true at the same time and in the same sense? They can. They no, can. They no, yes, they, they cannot. Can. Hold on, hold on. No, they cannot. And Bill okay, Maher so is an atheist, and he's rejecting what the hell you're saying. No, because, again, like I pre previously stated, there are atheist Muslims that exist on this planet. Not every Muslim yeah. accepts the God. That is a logical contradiction. An atheist no, it's, Muslim. It is not a contradiction. It's just a different world. Just like Can you explain to me how, uh, uh, how it... Uh, how if it it's a different worldview, if, if it's a different worldview from the Muslim worldview, then they're not Muslim. Exactly. That's just like saying there's oh, a yeah, Christian a atheist. No true that's Scotsman like saying fallacy. Right. Oh and that's not a no true Scotsman, Scotsman fallacy. No, 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 no. Oh. It is only an, uh, it's only a no true Scotsman fallacy if you arbitrarily like say it out the blue. But if it's implicitly like stated within the position that in order to be a Christian slash Muslim, you have to believe in the Christian God, then that's not a no true Scotsman fallacy. Exactly. It is a fallacy because you said you have to believe in a monotheistic God. Oh my no. gosh. Okay. Okay. I can't for believe the Christian. stupidity I'm hearing right now. For a Christian, right? Because people often say that say that um they are Christian, but then they fell away from the faith. Well well in the scripture it says that those that were of me who well if if they fall from me, then they were never well, if they fall from us, they were never of us, which is yeah. basically saying that if they fall away from the faith, they were never Christians to begin with. So whenever we often say that, that's often said that, oh, that's no true Scotsman fallacy. No, it's not. It's implicit within the the definition of being Christian anyway. Okay, exactly. but what about the people that leave the religion and then come back? They were never part of the religion to leave it. Okay, but if the ultimate conclusion if they, if they, is that if they, if they, they believe quote, unquote, in a monotheistic Christian God, no. and that is your stipulation for being oh a Christian, oh my goodness! If they, Why if they, if they, if they quote, quote, quote thing we say, because I think it, it's wrong. It, it, hold, hold on. If, if they quote unquote leave the faith, right, and then come back to the faith, and then they're a Christian. Whenever they left the faith the first time, they were never a Christian to begin with during that time span. But whenever they came back and then they actually had a change of heart, that's the point where they became a true Christian. Okay, that's a good yeah. answer. Until they leave again. They never no, left in the first no, place because if, they were if, never a part of it. You can't leave what you're not a part of to begin with, by definition. You yeah. can leave a faith twice. No, if your heart oh actually changes... If your heart actually, in the Christian worldview, if your heart actually changes, then you won't leave. Because if you leave the faith, then your heart was never in the faith. Exactly. And that's what the Christian worldview says, whether you like it or not. Okay. Still, it sounds like a no true Scotsman. If it's the not a no true Scotsman worldview, if it's literally it's within no the conditions. Exactly. That's just like saying, um, the conditions to be a medical doctor is for you to go to college, for you to get your license, have passed certain exams, the whole nine yards. If you don't fulfill all those conditions, then you're not a medical doctor in that context. And it's not a no true Scotsman's fallacy to say and then until you fulfill those conditions that you cannot, by that context, be deemed to be a medical doctor. It's as simple as that. Okay, but the problem is that the conditions for being a doctor are completely different in different places. Like You're in also Europe, creating the conditions. I don't have to be a doctor to know that I have a cold. No, no. Okay, you're actually making my point because of the conditions to be a medical doctor in the USA is different than the conditions to be a medical doctor in Madagascar. Then we're talking about something specific to 
where these uh, uh, are instituted from. If we're talking about America and the conditions, you need to you need to have gone to school, passed your exams, gotten licensed, all the whole nine. If you need to do all that in America and you haven't done that in America, then according to that definition, you're not a medical doctor in America. And in the same way, when we're talking about Christianity, if the requirement, and it is biblically founded, that if you were of us, you would have remained. Therefore, you would have been a Christian. The requirement is once you are changed from the inside out, you remain. That's the requirement. If you quote unquote leave, you were never a part of us to begin with. That's the condition in Christianity. Okay, yeah, but like if, if Christianity is this sort of thing that's like innate to you, doesn't the sort of the sort of reality of some people that leave and come back sort of deconstruct that entirely? Because if, if it's something that question. you can lose, if something if it's something that you can lose and then gain again, it's not something that's innate to the person. It's just something that can sort of be learned and unlearned. You no, didn't gain no, it again. You, you didn't yeah, gain yeah, it the first time. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So they so everybody who's like a Christian who had at one point left the faith is not actually a Christian. Oh my, why do you keep saying left the faith? You keep implying that they were in it. They were not. Yeah, I oh, think oh. like I think that the fact is that God gave people special revelation because it's not something they can perceive through logic and science and just simply the you know general revelation of the world. So it's something that's innate to you that you may not fully conceive of because it's something that you'd have to understand on a whole nother level than what we use to perceive logic and reason. And so that innate knowledge would always be there. You may not be able to perceive it or perceive it more or less at different times. Um, but the fact is that that innate knowledge would be there underlying, um, you know, and whether or not you were in touch with it would have to do with how much your faith aligned with what that was, I guess. Okay, then if your God is all loving and all knowing, why didn't he just make this innate to every single human being? Okay, that's a different question. Now you're moving the goal. Yeah, no, no, no. I, I, no I'm, 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 I'm conceding the point. I'm conceding the point. I'm conceding the point. Well, I think that's the point is that he did make it known, but people just haven't perceived it. Um, and in order to perceive it, they have to come to understand. Yeah. So then it yeah. is innate to everyone. Well, okay. innate okay. knowledge well, of God. Well, wait, innate wait, knowledge of wait. God is not the same as repentance. Wait, but the, so in terms of innate knowledge, I think that there's probably a difference between how um, how people that are Calvinists may view this and those that are not, because in Calvinism there's a certain elect that will be saved, and there in it's not through works, it's through that that you would be saved, and so there's going to be a different perspective on whether or not everyone has that revelation. Um, I mean, I, I think probably a Calvinist in here would probably be better at explaining that, uh, but. Well, the Bible states very clearly that none can come to the Father unless the Father draws them. Simple as that. Okay, then not all people are innately have this. I don't. I don't know if you want to call it like okay. a Christian gene or something. No, no, no. no, it was no that's, knowledge, repentance. That's not the yeah, same thing. Yeah, yeah, because the the Bible said the Bible states that everybody has knowledge that God exists, but they repress, but they repress the truth in their unrighteousness. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then what's, what's this sort of, uh, this other thing that you're talking about? Not, not the innate knowledge, but. Oh, the elect. Um, that's something that in uh, Calvinism, they believe that God didn't save everyone. He saved a specific elect. And so we can't necessarily know who that is on earth. Um, but, you know, we're kind of destined already uh, due to, you know, everything having to be according to God's will. And so that, um, that we're more just have like a relative free will um, and their perspective on it is that nothing you do in the world is going to save you, um, that we're all sinners, but that it's due to the fact that Jesus, you came to Jesus, that that's, that you were saved to that. Um, now, that's not a concept that all Christians believe in. So, um, I mean, that's actually something I'd like to hear debated uh, in here. It would be interesting. Okay, so then, like, which is it? Because I can't, I can't, I can't debate an inconsistent ideology. Yeah. I, I, I can't, yeah. you know. Yeah, that's fair. And I, I mean, I don't think that, I mean, it depends on, I guess, if you're talking to Tom Locke. Tom Locke, do you believe in uh, the elect? Yes, I'm, I'm a reformed Calvinist. Okay, so then do you, do you think, do you think that people who are not elect know God in that way? People who are not elect, do they yeah. know God? They only know God in the sense of um, certain uh, moral precepts that they endow 
within them are they saved and they do they have a loving salvific relationship with them if that's how if that's another way to define knowledge then in that sense no yeah okay. but god didn't reveal himself to them so that they can know and you know come to understand him and you know be and and be saved by jesus right. all right like, so then my, the my father, original then the father did not draw those to him okay he so then my the elect to him Okay, so then my original question still stands. Why didn't God just select everyone to be the elect instead of just having a select few? Uh, because God has a sovereign purposes for what he does. Oh, he can so do what he wants, and everything he does is perfectly righteous and just. Okay, but again, this sort of presupposes your own ideology, right? Like you're kind of arguing. Yeah, it does. Your... Do yeah, you, it do does. You, it's do you it's think a circularity that given circular... my epistemology. I can't, I can't have any sort of like constructive argument with you if you don't believe in the fundamental idea of logic. Well, where do you get this idea that because I don't have your fundamental understanding of these issues that I don't believe in logic and reason? Because you've just conceded that what you just did was circular reasoning and you said that that's the right way to go about making decisions. Okay. Do you reject circularity in principle, sir? I think that, what do you mean circularity in principle? What does that mean? Okay, I'm going to have to explain this to you very clearly. There are certain things that are fallaciously circular, and then there are other things which are not. Like, for instance, um, how would you be able to demonstrate the laws of logic exist without presupposing it? You can't the do only, so. It's a, it's a necessary circle. The only way that we can sort of show that the rules of logic exist is by applying them to the natural world. But then you sort of get into all sort of other epistemological, like, sticky situations. But that's sort of metaphysics, no, and I don't know if we should really go down that road. But that's still presupposing that the laws exist within themselves. Exactly. You can't apply them to the natural world in that way anyways. You can't find the laws of logic under a rock, behind a tree, or anything like that. I didn't These say they were potential. found. I said that we can apply them, and they consistently work when we apply them. No, their application is presupposing their validity. You're using you using the the same principles to prove that they exist. That's look, my guy. Circles, you are sir. you are literally arguing against logic here. So can you argue that logic exists without using logic itself, sir? No, I can't. Can you argue against God? Exactly. That's a circle. Without like, can, can you That's argue for God without presupposing that God exists? No. <laughs> okay, so then we're both wrong. Great. Do you now refute your religion? No, 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 no. I'll, I'll, no, I'll refute I, logic if you refute your no, religion. No, 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 no. I want to right, again, so, uh, again, again, again. Show me how logic exists without using logic itself. Okay, it. here's, here's the thing. PhD students and fucking professors have been trying to find epistemological truths for logic for like literally fucking millennia. And I think that there is actually some really good literature on this, but I would literally need a PhD in this matter to be able to explain this to you. I'm I still take for, for you to do it. Do you, sure. do you not understand I what I just said? I said that I don't have the expertise to just so to, to, to find the epistemological truth behind logic. The PhDs can't do it either. I How got do you news know that? for you. They can't either. Oh my god. Because so it's, I, a look, look, I, I, it's a I, basic, I, it's a basic, unavoidable bedrock principle that if you're mm -hmm. going to argue for the existence of logic, you're going to be using logic itself. You're going to be using universals itself to do so. You can't avoid it. Okay, no so if, I'm, if I'm not, no layman can avoid this, and no PhD can avoid it. If I'm not mistaken, while uh, what's his face, while Darth was still in here, the two of you are having a grand old time calling out logical fallacies left and right. Um, so as far as I'm aware, do you then uh, apologize and, and retract all of those statements? No. Why not? I don't, I don't retract any of them. What do why I not? need to retract? But, but, but you're, you're, saying, you're, saying that, you're saying that logic is, is unfounded. So why, why would logical fallacies be a problem? I didn't say that. Well, that's pretty, pretty much what you're arguing. What are you arguing then? Please clarify your point. I'm saying if you reject all circularity in principle, then you're done. Because you're going to have to reject the existence of logic, too. Because you can't argue logic without presupposing it. Yes, but that makes logic... Like, th th these, these, <laughs> this is what I'm kind of saying. Like, I don't have the epistemological education to be able to find, to, to be able to defend the axioms of logic. That doesn't mean they don't exist. And I don't think that you have the epistemological chops to I do so either. That. I didn't say that. So, 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 can so I, you were criticizing him. You're criticizing him about circular reasoning. 
And then he asked you, oh, well, do you reject circular reasoning? My, the point that I'm getting at here is I don't know how to explain to you why circular reasoning is wrong. So, so can I explain? Okay. I think that, so Tom oh, Locke... Oh, okay. Tom, Locke, yeah, so Tom Locke accepts that God has given him a special revelation that is something, again, that's innate, not something we can find through just the logic and reason and structure that we can perceive around us. And through that special revelation, we are able to come to understand that the Christian view is representative of that innate knowledge, which is knowledge of God. Now, you would have to suppose that we have that knowledge and that that knowledge reflects the Christian worldview. And Tom Locke feels that this knowledge that he has been granted does reflect the Christian worldview and that it is innate to him to understand the world in this way. And therefore, it would be incoherent for him to hear an argument against that because it would un it would unbase all the logic oh. that he has and understands. Oh, okay, 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 okay. I, I, okay yeah. Let me ask him a question. Do you know what the Munchausen's trilemma is, sir? I am not aware. Please explain. The Munchausen's trilemma is um, invoking three horns to when you justify any particular statement. The three horns are the following. When you try to justify any statement, either it's going to fall under something that is totally arbitrary. That's one horn. The other horn of justification is infinite regression. And the third horn is circular reasoning. Now, when you try to justify any statement, it's going to by logical necessity fall under one of those three horns. So which, so let me ask you a question. Which one of those three horns do you accept in which you have to justify anything? Arbitrariness, uh, infinite regress, or circular reasoning? Yeah, I think this is kind of where our fundamental disagreement is going to come from because I, I honestly, I, I just, I just like, I take the laws of logic for granted. And I think that there are certain axioms that we hold to be self-evident, um, like, like re regardless of these things, right? So if I, if I were to answer your question, I'd say um, not all three of those horns are equal. That's fine, but which one of them are you going to use to justify a particular statement? I think that most scholars would have choose the uh, the second, the arbitrary horn, the one uh, the one that sort of uh, denotes like I I guess you would say that that would then lead to um, non-objective morality, right? Well, if, you, if you're going to say that a starting point is just arbitrary, then then you literally would have to say that anybody could just stipulate something randomly. It's arbitrary and then but, justify but, something. But, okay, sure. And then if I concede this point, you also have to concede yours then, right? Well, I don't hold that view. Okay, I then take what, the which, which... I, take, I take circularity. Okay, but they're all, they're all pretty shit. That's the problem, right? Circularity isn't better than arbitrariness. That's the whole point. Oh, oh okay. Okay, so you're going to take the other horn, infinite regression? No, no, I'm saying that they're all equally. Well, not equally, but they're all pretty shit. Okay, then you can't justify nothing because any claim that you justify is going to fall under one of oh, those Okay, horns. Okay, yes, sure, I concede that. But then if you go by that reasoning, you also have to concede your own points. May I interject? No, 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 because I don't accept that all forms of circularity is irrational. Okay, you, but you, don't, see, you don't accept? I don't know if you do. I'm, I'm trying to understand if you reject circularity in principle, only certain types of circularity. You keep saying circularity. What do you mean by circularity? The fact that... You begin with the same thing that you want to justify. If I'm saying that God is so, uh, justifies himself, then I'm starting with God to justify himself. He is self-justifying, self-authenticating. Yeah, you're and using your example, to prove and, and your another premise. example I gave to see if you reject circularity in principle is to show, is to show one simple thing. Can you demonstrate to me how to argue for the existence of logic without presupposing logic itself? <laughs> actually, somebody somebody has just sent me a message that you, you haven't actually given me the correct three horns here. None of those were right. The three are foundational, okay. coherentist, and infinitist. None of what you just said is okay. correct at all. Okay, okay. What's so and when I said arbitrary you, and uh, an yeah. arbitrary assessment, infinite regress and circular reasoning. How how is what I stated wrong? But because because those aren't the three horns, though that's just that's, not that's true. That's literally what they are. I can literally yeah, look it up for you well, right actually, now. They kind of are. If you talk yeah, about um, coherentism, it is it is, would be reduced to circularity. If you're talking about axioms, it would be foundational. If you're talking about infinite regress, it would be infinitism. It see, would you be, you, see, you thought you had a gotcha on me. You don't see you don't know what you're talking about. And you just took whatever someone sent you as oh, whole stuff. Oh shit.
<laughs> you see, Once you need you, 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 oh, and they're actually you really five you years. really need to school yourself on this stuff before you start accepting what people say uncritically, dude. My man, I can't like look. Yeah. Nobody in these spaces argues anything without like the assumption of the laws of logic. You you are definitively illogical. Uh, and that's and that's and that's a circle, dude. Do you reject that? Yeah, yes, but you can't use any oh of these gosh. laws if you <laughs> What are you? What are you saying? Oh my gosh! My my whole point is you can't use any of these things to prove your point either. If all of them are completely broken and unfounded, as you say they are. If you reject all three horns as justification, then you can justify nothing, sir. Why? Why is why is circularity better than uh, better than foundationalist or whatever this other guy is calling it here? Why is it superior? Because ultimately, that's the only way to justify anything. Why? And there is inescapable. Well, no, no, that's not the only way. I could arbitrarily say something and call that a justification. But is it a rational justification? Well, we're, we're outside of the realm of reason now because we've already sort of tossed the laws of reason to the side. No, I... Oh, oh my goodness. Do you think just merely stating something arbitrarily is a rational justification for anything? No, I don't. Okay, so again, how are you going to justify anything without one of these three horns? How are you going to? You can't. That's my point. Yeah, that was my point from the start. So again, if you're going to reject me invoking circular reasoning, then you have to answer the question. Do you reject circularity in principle? Yes, I reject all three of the horns. Then you can justify you nothing. Them. You're done. Yes, but then I then you can also not justify anything. If you're agreeing with me on this, oh then you can't justify gosh. yours either. I didn't agree with you. I said you you just you work. just said oh you just God. said you just oh my said you just said that we agree. What? No, no, no. You you, you have listening problems, dude. I said I accept one of the three horns, which is circularity. Yeah, I, okay, okay. and my, the, the point, the, point the thing that I'm asking you to do is to justify why the circularity